Tonight is April the 7th, 2015. I'm going to make a video tonight on, um, on an improvement to the old Dynaco Mark III. I make a lot on this Mark III. But you could apply this to a number of amplifiers. It's got the original board in it. The 6A and 8. A couple of 6550s. I've got them here in the, my test jig. But let's look at the schematic and, and, and see what we might could do to improve it. Here's, here's the original schematic right here. There's that light again. Okay. First of all, one of the things we could get rid of would be that one, that 11.2 ohm resistor. Let's take that thing and take it out, throw it away, and put a 10 ohm resistor from this cathode to ground and a 10 ohm resistor from this cathode to ground so that we can measure the cathode current separately. Secondly, what we want to do right here at, across this these two points right here is we want to add a 500k pot from that point to that point and then off of the wiper of the pot take a 1 mega ohm to ground. That allows us a little bit of adjustment of this DC bias voltage right here. So when our tubes aren't perfectly balanced, it allows us to have one or two more volts on one tube than the other, and we can balance the cathode currents perfectly. So that takes uh, care of the static conditions. Now, what we need to do to take care of the uh, dynamic conditions is this resistor right here is 47K, and this one's 47K. Now, if this is the perfect tube, that's cool. That's going to be exactly what we want. But this tube is not going to be always perfect, and it's never going to be perfect. So we need to make one of these variable. We'll leave this one right here where it is, and we're going to change this one so that we can go 10K above and below 47K. So we're going to put in like a 39K and a 20K pot. And that's exactly what I've done. I'll show you how I've drawn it. It's rather crude. But it shows exactly what I'm talking about. I have it in yellow. This is what I've done to this amplifier. I've put in, this is a 10 ohm and a 10 ohm. I forgot to write it in there. And um, I measure them with my digital meter and make sure they're exactly the same. A matched pair of 10 ohm resistors there. This is that 500K. And the wiper, this is a 1 meg back to ground. This, is allow, this allows us, I didn't draw all of the circuit in here, of course. I'm just drawing in what we need to modify. This allows us to slide the voltage one way or the other slightly to balance our tubes if they're not balanced perfectly, and most aren't. And here's that 47K changed to a 39K and a 20K. So that we can go at 47K or we can go a little bit above or a little bit below to match this one down here that I didn't draw in. Like I say, this is going to give us a DC balance and this is going to give us an AC balance. We'll adjust this one for perfect balance of the cathode currents with no drive. And we'll adjust this one for perfect balance of the cathode currents under full drive. Okay, now I can turn back on the lights and there it is. It's actually turned on right now too. So I can't stick my finger down there. Now I guess I've got it turned off. Anyway, there's that pot. That's the DC balance pot. There's the AC balance pot. They fit in there nicely. This is a 500K. This is the um, 20K. See how I changed that 47K out to 39. Here's my DC ground. And here's a test point for this tube, that red one. And over here, uh, this red one is the DC test point for here, so I can measure the cathode currents. Now that's redundant since I have this uh, device right here, but not everybody has this device, so uh, um, this is what you'll want to put in unless you got this contraption. So let me uh, let me fire it up here and get started. Okay, she's all warmed up. I'm going to try to do this um, so 
so that you can see exactly what we're doing here. Okay, see, I'm, I'm monitoring V1s, this one, which if you follow this cable goes over to here, we're looking here. V1, V1, this cable to that socket, to this meter lead, and the plate of V1 is measuring 66 milliamps plus 4.4, 4. 68 and 4 uh, is 70, 1 or 2, here again, let's see, it, it actually comes out right, that's 66 and 4.4, 4. that'd be 70.4, there it is, bouncing around a little bit. So there's the tube, and then the other tube measures, see we got one measuring at 66, let's just go by this, and the other one measures 60, 70. So first of all, we've got to set the main bias control as Dynaco designed it, so that we get around 70 milliamps per tube. Now we had a over here, when you used to measure this thing at 1.56 volts, that was across an 11.2 ohm resistor. And if you do the math, you see that the current I equals E over R is 140 milliamps, which is 70 milliamps per tube. But we're not going to do it that way anymore. We're going to measure it directly. We're measuring the cathode current. And the cathode current, we know, is the sum of the plate current and the screen current. The sum of the plate current here and the screen current here. So what we want is about as close to 70 milliamps as we can get. That one's right on 70, and that one is a little bit off. I made it off just a little bit so I can show you the adjustment. Now we adjust this pot right here, and watch when one goes up. See when one when this when this one goes up. See now that one's 70, but watch watch what happened. The other one went down a little bit. See 68. I mean not much. I mean we're splitting hairs here. But if we go back and forth with our, our switch right here, to one tube, there's 70, to the other tube, there's a little bit lower. Now if we raise this one, it lowers the other one. They go in opposite directions. I'm trying to get back on that pot right there. Right there. And I'm going to raise that one to right there, right below 70. Oh darn, I went the wrong way, didn't I? Well anyway, you gotta fool with this thing. Let's don't drive ourselves crazy. That's just a hair over 68. There we go, a hair over 68. So now we have, okay, and not only that, we're gonna see the same thing right here. See, we got 7.73 there. I'm gonna move the probe over to here, and we see 0 0.727, 0 0.73. You know the numbers are never gonna be exactly the same. All right, and you could adjust that little pot this way too. That's what I'm trying to show you. You can you can tweak the little DC balance pot right here so that you get exactly the same numbers here, and you're going to be just as close as if you did it this way. So we got 0.728 and 0.732. If we want to, we'll lower that one I'm just a hair. 0.732. I went the wrong way. There you go. 727. And the other one is 728. Let's quit there. So we are splitting hair now. So we're able to balance it with a regular voltmeter. We set it to Dynaco specs with the this pot right here, the one that came with it, one that's built into it, installed and designed by Dynaco, and then we balance it at our two test points, which is right at the cathode of these two tubes that are grounded through 10 ohm resistors. Okay, now that we've done that, let's put a signal into it. Okay, and start driving it. And I'm gonna drive it all the way up. To, there, it's clipping just a little bit. Putting out 56 watts at 0.2%. Let's lower it just a little bit. There you go, let's lower it. Just a little bit more. There we go. 0 0.4. 54 watts at 0.4 percent. Now, unfortunately, my meter pegs at 100 milliamps, 
See, this one is measuring, see how it's just a little bit, how it's just swinging a little bit past 100 milliamps. The other one, see, is at the same point because I've already balanced it. But if I start turning this AC balance right here, I can change all of that. Watch, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to turn it some way and it's either going to go up or down. I can keep the screwdriver in there. Sorry for the fumbling. Okay. See how I can raise it? See, I can lower it. As I lower one, I'm raising the other one. So I'm going to set this one just over 100. See, if I set this one at 100, and then I go back over here and I look at the plate current of the other one, see, it's a little bit it's too pegged. So I can lower this one. It's hard to see that slot. That's what it is. There. See, it's a little bit off scale here, but that was just a little bit past the one. The other tube is about the same point. Or we can do it this way. See, this one's measuring 1.1, 1 1.12. .1, 1 .1 the other one is measuring 1.37. So let's lower that one. Wrong way. Okay, let's, what, what about that? 1.25. Then the other tube is 1.32. I mean, we are here. We go splitting hairs again. 25 and 32. Let's see if we can actually get that a little bit closer. Okay, there's 26 on that one and 28 on that one. That's about as good as we can get. Look at that. See, we even straightened out a little bit of the the clipping. Now we got 0.3 percent at 53 watts. I'm going to crank up the gain just a little bit. Uh, 54 watts. 55.7 watts at 0.6%. 56 watts at 1%. And we can see the, the, the virtually perfect symmetrical clipping. In my opinion, that's pretty much the ultimate adjustments you can make to the old Dynaco amplifier. You can also do this if you if you look the the the, the designs and the schematics to a lot of amplifiers are so much the same. You could make this kind of change to many different amps, the old Fishers, uh, all of the Dynacos, of course, and many others. You can't make these kind of changes to Macintosh. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go there. Just don't go there. But uh, you balance. Uh, you balance the DC currents, the uh, the no drive cathode currents, and then you with uh, one pot, and then with the other one you do the AC balance, and uh, that's about as good as life is going to get. For these old Dynaco amplifiers. Hope this helps. I'm not going to start drawing schematics because anybody. Uh, that's going to be able to make these changes understands, I believe, what I'm saying and, and can figure it out. Good luck and uh, thanks for watching. And one more thing, you know I always forget something. Look what I picked up for $5. Isn't that a beauty? It was absolutely falling apart right here at the edges. All these finger joints had come loose. And it just looked really sad. So I got it at a garage. Whoops. That didn't fall off. Except on purpose. Except because I'm not paying attention. But it works beautifully. Anyway, I better leave that off. It does work. It works great. Let me turn it on here and I'll see what you... You can watch it come up there. It comes up and you set it, set it right in the middle to uh, line test. And plug in a tube and, and there it goes. Um, I just had to tighten up the, the pins in here. They were kind of sloppy and I'd have to hold the tube, you know, sideways. And this thing right here rolls pretty good in certain portions, but when I get to the end, it's kind of won't see it. They don't want to go any further. I've, I've had, actually had it apart. I can't quite figure it out. But you can get all these data sheets off of the uh, internet. It's a Hickok 6000A. 
Here's your right there. Five bucks. I love garage sales. I like it. Actually, I think I like this one better than my that TV7DU one that I have. Just it's a little quicker and simpler.